Hey everybody, it's Richard Gubbia. So, we have another video for you today. Um, basically, I went to Galloping Ghost. Now, those of you that are not familiar with Galloping Ghost, the Galloping Ghost is this really freaking huge arcade. It has over 400 arcade machines, and it has a separate building like two blocks down full of pinball machines, which I still have yet to go to. But uh, the week I, I did plan on going, um, I ended up spending more money than I could afford, and I couldn't go that week. And then when I let uh, Mega Dan know, because I was supposed to go over there with him, um, he's like, well, I'm actually going this week, and Game Me Off The Grid's coming. I'm like, what? What? I got the pickle. I, I mean, what? Game Me Off The Grid? Um, yeah, it was crazy hearing that. Galloping Ghost was a trip and a half, but uh, I managed to get there in one piece, and I was able to find parking, which is great, you know? Um, you have to park on the road, but, uh, yeah, I, I was supposed to be there uh, roughly about four, and I got there a little early, so I let Dan know I was there, and then went in, paid for a couple waters and admission, and walked around a little bit. And one of the games I played was uh, Two Tankum, which is one of my favorite arcade machines there because it brings me back to uh, times when my dad actually used to have the cabinet in our basement. I used to play that uh, hours on end. And I'm kind of sad that my dad sold it, but you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, I also got a chance to play Splatterhouse. Which I got so far in it. Um, I think just past the part with the worms. Um, or is it the part where the everything's trying to attack you? Knives and picture frames and a chair, you know? Yeah, I couldn't get too far in that, but uh, really cool game. Like, I, I really enjoy that. Like, I want to play more of that. Um, I think they have a console port too, which I'm probably going to double check on and make sure I'm not tucking on my ass. And then uh, one of the games on there that uh, I kind of wish actually had a home port uh, was uh, Contra... Uh, the new something rather, or I... Fuck, I don't remember what it's called. But it looked like the, uh, the first Contra, but with like newer graphics, like like nice PS2, Xbox graphics, which I thought looked fantastic. Like a 2D scroller, but with like updated graphics and stuff, which again, looked just amazing. And then, uh, let's see, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I played through, uh, Area 51 as well. I actually got all the way through that this time. <laughs> With enough credits, of course. <laughs> oh, but loads of fun, loads of fun. So I, I played the uh, Beavis and Butthead arcade game, which was pretty cool. And um, it was uh, like a isometric kind of beat em up in which you had to, you know, walk basically a, a path down the screen, you know, so that way you can defeat enemies, get to the end boss, and then, you know, reach the babes, you know, they're babes on the end of uh, each level. And um, I, I think the only issue that I have with that game is that, like, the... It, it, it doesn't seem exactly complete because like for like the the main bosses and stuff like the the shooting powers you get it's it's ranged it's it's too short of range to actually hit the boss like i found myself actually like having to get like nose to nose with the boss just to hit him with anything i had like i i thought i had enough uh 
I thought I was close enough, you know, where I could just like shoot whatever projectile Beavis was shooting at him, but no. And then at the end, at the way end, spoilers, um, he gave it gives you an option to either visit Uranus <laughs> or uh, destroy the earth <laughs> let's destroy the earth um, that's probably loud uh, sorry daughter uh, but uh, yeah really cool game and then um, I just got a notification from Dan saying that uh, they're about to arrive uh, they just pulled up in the car and uh, they were just walking up to the entrance. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'll go meet them, you know, by the entrance. And a minute or two later, they showed up. And then I saw Dan and I looked at him like, oh, dude, I got the pickle. Uh, <laughs> like he was wearing the same sh shirt that I gave him. You know, it's the same design, but it's, it's a lot bigger um, on the shirt which I, I kind of wish that I was able to get a shirt with design that big, but this is good enough. But yeah, I digress. Um, but yeah, and then there was gaming off the grid. I'm like, what? I was so excited. Oh man. Meeting gaming off the grid for the first time was awesome. Like what a, a cool, cool set of guys. Naturally, you know, they wanted to take a tour of it, you know, to figure out, like, what they wanted to play and stuff, which, you know, and watching them, you know, react to it the way I react to it, like, my first time, which I thought was freaking awesome. Like, it was almost kind of an out-of-body experience watching them react the same way that I reacted myself and you guys are welcome to watch the first uh, galloping ghost video um, I upload it as a W reloaded that's gonna be my title for anything that I re upload to the channel so um, there will be probably a few videos that I probably will be re uploading to the channel um, but uh, yeah anyways but yeah really cool guys like really friendly polite and just overall good guys like it, it was it was very comfortable uh, hanging with them today um, one of the first things I believe we played together was the X-Men game because it was it was at least four players and uh, <laughs> each of us were having problems like figuring out how to get the character to start you know I guess uh, what we have to do is we have to like put credits in to that individual character and then hit the magic button. At least I think that's how it went. But yeah, um, as you can see here, we ended up finishing the game and completing it. Um, somewhere halfway through when I was playing Nightcrawler, um, I tried to keep putting credits in and then hit the button and nothing would happen. I, I thought I was hitting the, the one for Nightcrawler, but uh, I guess I was hitting the one for Dazzler. Yeah, um, never heard of Dazzler. And <laughs> I was kind of joking, like, you get a couple of friends and stuff, and <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be like, okay, I'll be Wolverine, and uh, I'll be Cyclops, and I'll be Storm, and I'll be... Uh, uh, I guess I'll be Dazzler. Aw, oh, man. Good game. Uh, plays a lot like, like Turtles in Time, frankly, in my opinion. Dan and Wes was playing uh, in one of the Alien games. and So I'm like, alright, I'll play some House of the Dead. Because it's right there. And man, <laughs> that game is definitely a coin eater. Like... It is a coin pig. Because, like... Especially with, like, the final boss, too. Because, like... There's a spot where the final boss... Uh, takes these, like, fireballs, puts them in a circle, and then... 
throws them up in the air, you know, and you have to sh you have to like shoot them down and stuff. And as fast as I could fire, you know, I could never get all of the uh, the fireballs out of the air. And I managed just you know using it one handed while well, keeping my hand on the uh, on the continue button just to keep afloat, if you will. But yes, um, as you can see here, I also managed to complete that game as well. Ah, uh, such a good game. Now, I know we played uh, Golden Axe 3, which it was a little bit of a tight space, I, I will admit. Um, and uh, the jumping on that across the, the pits for something to be desired. <laughs> I mean, some of the time, like, the only way we would get across those pits would be for us to die and then hopefully respawn on the other side of the pit. Because, like, I, I swear to God, the jumping's, like, directly up and down. I and mean, you can try and do over and jump, but somehow you just still manage in the pit for some reason. Go figure. But yeah, uh, we managed to complete that as well. And, you know, as you can see here, this is the the ending cutscene, which you get to see the golden axe. It was at that time that we uh, ran into Doc. Uh, Doc is the owner of Galloping Ghost. Wonderful guy. Really knowledgeable. He knows his shit about the arcades. Uh, as he should, of course. I mean, <laughs> being one of the largest owners of arcade machines <laughs> and of the large arcade. But yeah, I gave him one of my stickers uh, with my logo on it. Uh, he said thanks. And uh, Dan asked him, like, what's his... Uh, what's his favorite game in the arcade? And if I remember correctly, and, you know, Dan can probably confirm or deny this with me, is it was NARC. Now, supposedly, um, and I, I can't say for sure, but I would definitely take Doc's word for it. Um, he says that his version of NARC actually has an extra level that's not found anywhere else or found in very rare cabinets of NARC. It's like a helicopter level, which, wow, I mean, that's definitely one of the games I want to try on my next, uh, next trip to Galloping Ghost. Hopefully there'll be another one this year. I can't say for sure. And then, you know, I sit down and rest my feet on the nearest stool I find and just chill with Robert for a little bit. Uh, so then me and Robert um, looked at this one aircraft flight simulator game kind of um, where you have to fly and you have to like take out targets in a certain amount of time and you only got limited ammo. Uh, Robert tried it first you know and it's a really interesting uh, uh, simulator because like it's got two foot pedals at your feet actually wherever else would it go um the seat doesn't click in but you're able to screw it forward enough and it seems to hold you good enough um you got your thrust over here you got your control that allows you to look all around your the uh the cockpit which is is neat and then of course then you got your your flight stick that allows you to pitch forward or pitch backwards left or right you know and uh, after he gave it a try, I I did my best on it. I managed to take out two targets. <laughs> but, oh my god, just trying to control the game was pretty insane. Like, it was crazy. It was, it's definitely something to get used to. And I think with practice, somebody could be very good at that game and have some real intense fun like it's just for me flight simulators it's it's not something i'm used to i should say 
yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good game. And then uh, after that, we decided, you know, let's go someplace to eat. And, uh, well, we decided on this place uh, called Pac-Man Entertainment. Um, it was at a mall. And um, if you guys are following a GPS to it, um, I would advise... Um, using it to get to the mall and if you see red robin um go all the way around the mall because you'll definitely see it from the outside so you walk into this place and to the left of you you see this big huge pac-man which was like put together with like lego bricks that are like that big like the size of my fist just about and uh across the the walls and stuff to the side of it, wrapped it around, it was like the history of Pac-Man. And then on the far wall, there was a, a video about, you know, how they put that Pac-Man together, which I thought was cool. It, the Pac-Man looked as big as it looked in pixels, almost. I mean, it looked like it could easily swallow somebody whole. And uh, I felt, oh yeah, and the floor was like the the old Pac-Man screen, you know, with the ghosts and the uh, the blue track and, and stuff. Really cool looking. So you go up the stairs and then there's like a uh, bowling alley to your left and with uh, Pac-Man bowling balls. Um, they had like little Pac-Man and the ghosts like printed on it and stuff. And right next to the bowling alley was like some Pac-Man arcade systems, which were cool, which were cool. Cool to see. And then um, towards the other side of the restaurant, it was uh, like a ticket redemption kind of uh, arcade. You know, stuff that you would typically see in arcade where you would get tickets for prizes. And the food was good there. I, I really enjoyed the food. Um, the corned beef kind of tasted like roast beef, frankly, so I don't know where they were going with that, but where the fries are fantastic, though. We ate our meal, and we talked with Robert and Wes and stuff, and it was, uh, it was a good, uh, experience with them. I, I, I really enjoy the company, and I hope I get to see them again. Um, hopefully sooner than later because they were I, again really good people they're really nice guys they're really knowledgeable can't say enough good things about these guys like if you don't know who gave me off the grid is where the fuck you been like please go check out their channel um i'll leave a link in the description down below along with mega dance and uh Galloping Ghosts links But uh, Yeah, please go check out Galloping Ghost. It's it's a fantastic place to go It's like 20 bucks a day and they're usually open from 11 to uh, 2 but during this pandemic, you know the hours have changed so um, I would advise getting there earlier in the day then later in the day so that way you have more time to play because the time to close kind of vary. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really do appreciate you guys checking me out and you know watching this to the end. I really do. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself as much as I liked making this video. But for now um, we have to go because I have to edit this together and put it up. But this is Richard W saying have a good morning have a good afternoon have a good whatever i'll catch you guys later take care, <laughs> take care now bye 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 bye, -bye now